Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Another maintenance tip out there that help the beginners. A lot of the times when people tighten their chain up, uh, they don't know how to tension it properly. And especially if you make it a little bit too tight, it's going to wear the nose bar out much quicker because you've got too much tension on it. It's going to put a lot more wear and tear on all the linkages of, of the chain. And of course, the sprocket will get much uh, more tension on it. And the needle roller bearing in there, you're loading the system up unnecessarily. So you need to make sure that your tension's okay. And you need to be able to do it fairly quickly. You don't want to be playing around. And you don't want to be guessing too much. Because a lot of times people just guess. And I'll show you my way. And I don't know if anyone else ever does it that way. I've never really looked or seen anyone sort of say to do it my way. But... My way works. I've been doing it for 20-something years. I've had no problems with it. So that's the way I do it. So anyway, we'll just loosen this off. You'll notice that when I loosened it, the bar dropped down. So when you tension up, always make sure that the bar's lifted up. Because when the bar's lifted up, it gets a bit tighter. Anyway, so we'll just loosen that off. There it is there. It's loose as. Okay, we're going to tension this up. Now, I'll just zoom in a little bit closer so that you can see it. Now, when you tension a chain up, I like to actually lift the saw up, have it sitting like on an angle, and I'm holding it at the other end with my hand, as you can see. So that's the way that I like to hold a saw when I tension it up. Now, we'll just zoom in there. Now, the way that I tension it up is start to tighten it up until... The links go just into the bar. Now, the links are in the bar now. Then I like to pull the bottom down in the middle until the drive links are level, about three drive links are level with the bottom of the bar. And if you pull that down, I can see a gap. So I need to tighten that up a bit more. Pull that down. There's about three drive links that are almost level with the bar it could probably go just a touch just a touch and that's the way that i like to to do it that looks pretty good so i don't know i'll we'll just tighten that up i'll just show you that one more time now i'm not using a lot of force to pull that chain down i can see those drive links there easily now what should happen after that you need to just do that, and you should be able to move that along with your little finger. Or your for any finger or thumb. You should be able to move that along. If you find it a little bit difficult to move with your finger or thumb, it could be also that there's not enough oil on there, because if you do it with a dry chain, it's uh yeah, it's not a good idea to tension up on a real dry chain. Uh yeah, you can get a false reading. Much better to have a bit of oil on it. That works fine. And that is the correct way. And I find out that works good for me. If you've got a brand new chain, you probably need to do that two, three times in the first couple of minutes. Start the... So if it's just, just pretend that we've got a brand new chain on there. You'll start it up. You'll run it for about a minute without cutting wood. You'll just sort of uh, give it a bit of a rev off, on, off, on and recheck it. When you start using your chain, just take it easy. And after about five minutes, just stop and recheck the tension again. You'll probably have to adjust it two, three times uh, until it uh, wears in. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you'll probably go, oh, I haven't heard of that before. And when you first start your chainsaw on a brand new chain, and it's all the links are fairly tight. The moment that you run it after a couple of minutes, everything all loosens up. And that's, people refer to that as actually stretching. They'll say, oh, my chain stretched. But in actual fact, the chain never does stretch. 
what actually happens that all the links start to wear. And when they wear, the clearances get bigger. So the chain actually gets longer through the wear. Now I've got a chain here. It's a steel chain. It's a full chisel. It's come to its end of, end of its life. So I'm, I'm just going to show you how much wear is in this chain. So I'll hold it like that and hopefully you can see me moving the links in and out. I don't know, that looks like, that's moving quite a fair bit. Now you imagine you multiply that, this is a 20 inch chain, 36 drive links. You multiply that movement 36 times. It's quite a lot, isn't it? We'll go to another spot so that you can see that it wasn't just uh, a spot that I selected. There it is, look at that. So, but we all use that terminology, oh, the chain stretched, even I use it too. And because I've been using it all my life, I guess I'll keep on using it. But you know, people actually literally think that the, the links or the metal stretches, the metal itself doesn't stretch. It's all the linkages that wear, that cause that free, that play and the chain gets longer. Okay, look, we'll do a smaller saw. I've got an MS-180 and we'll do the same principle about tightening it up. So I've done it to this saw already, but I'll, I'll redo it again. The tightening mechanism on here doesn't use the stretch or the bolts. It uses this mechanism. Some people like it, some people don't. Just got to be careful you don't over-tighten that because if you over-tighten it, it's very hard to get it undone. I don't mind them. They work all right. Again, you would have noticed as soon as I loosened that, the bar dropped down. That's why you've got to make sure that you lift the saw up like that before you tension it. So the same principle applies. I'm going to tension that up until, I'll just put it there, until the chain goes into the groove. Then I'll pull it down slightly. I can see a, I can see too much of a gap. If you actually have a look, we'll zoom in there. You can see that those drive links, there's too much of a gap. So we'll just tension that up a little bit more. Pull that down. I can still see a little... What I want is that drive link to be level with the bottom of the bar. Uh, maybe that's just a little bit too much. I'll back him off. That's pretty good. So I'll just tighten that up. I've got a few, maybe three drive links that are almost level with the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, that should be able to push quite easily. There it goes. And you should be able to push that with your finger. See? If you can't push that with your finger, it's too tight. It's as simple as that. That method for me always works. And if you have a look, oh, it roughly pulls down, what would that be? I don't know, about seven millimetres, something like that there. But if you look at the bottom of the drive link, so all you've got to remember is there's the drive link. And the bottom of that needs to be level with the bar. No gap or not pushing up inside the bar. Just have it level, maybe three three drive links. When I pull that down, I can see three drive links roughly. Look at them. So make sure you don't have it too loose. If it's too loose, you risk the chain coming off. And if it's too tight, then you risk wearing the nose bar out the sprocket you're going to wear it out much quicker so easy to check it the way that i just showed you and uh you'll have no problems in the future look thanks for watching give us a thumbs up bye for now